Hello, guys and gals, me, Mudahar, and <laughs> I got a cheery disposition today because, ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad to see that one of my favorite multiplayer games has broken a record. Now, I talked about Payday 3, and I made a joke about it, you know, where I was like, that game is dead. It is. There's no joke about it. There's like maybe a couple hundred people playing that game at best. Now, I figured for everything negative in life, you got to talk about the positive. And the positive is, baby, Rainbow Six Siege has broken a... Record! Uh, what? I can't say I can't say that word in the first two minutes. Man, YouTube's wild. But ladies and gentlemen, Rainbow Six Siege has broken 200,000 players. It's actual record on Steam. That's just on Steam, baby. Now, ladies and gentlemen, obviously Rainbow Six, uh, you know, it's a franchise that I've actually grown up with. Uh, you know, I'm not going to say that I was a Rainbow Sixer like I was a Metal Gear fan because I am. I am a Metal Gear nut job. But Rainbow Six, one of my first interactions with the franchise was Rainbow Six 3 on the PlayStation 2. Now, I would never recommend you play this version of the game. It is awful. Uh, the only reason I had this was because as a kid, I had a PlayStation 2. All right, that's pretty much where, 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 my, where my console uh, allegiances lied at the time. Now, you, you could play the PC version, which is like a million times better than the, the Xbox version is better. I, I'm, I'm just going to straight up say it. The Gizmondo version might even be better, okay? I have some really bad memories with this. But you know what? Then I got Rainbow Six Vegas, Vegas 2, so on and so forth. And uh, Rainbow Six Siege is a game that I've been playing since day one. Me and my buddy Kyle bought that game at $60. We, we felt like we got scammed a little bit, don't get me wrong. <laughs> the launch for Rainbow Six Siege was not the greatest, but we're nine years into the game, and it is the best it's actually ever been. Now, if you look at my Siege history, Power Bottom Dad, you might be able to see that I've got a lot of hours put into the game. Hundreds of them. And there was a while where I actually used to play Rainbow Six Siege pretty much every day, you know? Uh, I come home from work, make a little video, and then immediately fire up Rainbow Six and play. And it wasn't until I would say maybe around 2019-ish, at that moment, you know, just, slow, just before COVID-19 hit, that I was playing the game pretty much actively on uh on 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 all on all forms of ranked multiplayer okay there was a moment where i even got to like platinum rank but you know that after that everything kind of fell down because for me i'm not exactly the greatest shooter player i don't really have the diligence to stick around with a game for like eight hours a day and pretty much keep up with the adderall kitties that's not really where i'm at i kind of just play these games and and enjoy them with my friends and call it a day now, Rainbow Six Siege uh, ha is a game now that if you look at it from year one, it's basically unrecognizable. You know when I talk about live service games and I keep saying they're bad? This is like the only good one that I've actually consistently played. Now, I've been playing Rainbow Six since year one, and I can still remember those initial seasons and how after every season they would introduce two operators, a new map, and it would just keep the game freshing and engaging, right? It was actually the only multiplayer game that I played where I genuinely felt like I didn't have to buy no goddamn map packs, and I actually felt like the new stuff I could actually consistently play over and over and over again, and it would keep me engaged. And it didn't happen, like, until the third year of the game where it actually fully clicked with me. When I actually started playing the game, I think it was around, like, Velvet Shell, when, like, I actually jumped in and played it pretty much day in and day out, and I was a consistent Rainbow Six Siege player. Now, I would say that a lot of the popularity for Rainbow Six right now comes out to some popular streamers like Jinxie. I think I saw Charlie playing it on stream pretty much for like days on end, especially with this new season. It's gotten a lot of popularity. The new invitationals are actually super fun to watch. And to be fair with you, the game is in a much better state than it initially was, I would say, years ago. Now, Rainbow Six Siege has lost all forms of realism, okay? This is not a game that's centered in any form of realistic operations anymore. For crying out loud, you've got operators that can spawn holographic walls at this point. So any form of fucking realism, thrown out the goddamn window. But that's okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's fine. To give you an idea, it's a five-on-five -five, uh, tactical shooter where one life 
per round, okay? You don't respawn or do any of that nonsense. I guess the best way to put it is, is kind of like uh, Counter-Strike or Call of Duty Search and Destroy where a team of five on five exists. There's a bomb. The attacking team has to go in and plant a diffuser and the defending team has to prevent the attackers from actually jumping in. Now, what really separates and excites me about this game beyond any other shooter in this category is the fact that it's got wall destructibility, it's got really dynamic gameplay, and it's got a set of operators that actually have unique, interesting abilities. Now, one of the reasons why I don't really play games like Counter-Strike and Call of Duty and all that shit is that I think after you played enough hours of Counter-Strike, I think you've basically tapped out everything that can be done. It's a game where the maps are pretty much static, there is no destructibility, there's no ability for you to dig a tunnel from site A to site B, there really is no actual dynamic operators with like individual abilities. It's very much buy the AUG and go to town baby, the best shooter wins. And for me, I'm not the greatest shooter in a multiplayer game. I'll say it right now. I suck at shooting, okay? If you put me in your esports team, we're fucking getting wood three, boyos. We're not winning. Because I don't, I don't do a crap ton of Adderall, and my aim just isn't that good. If you put me up against a gunfight with, like, another platinum player, there's a good chance that I'm probably losing. Just because I don't really get the whole pre-firing stuff. I don't really get my aim done right. And honestly, I panic a little bit during a gunfight. I'm not the best player at that part of the game. But where I really do succeed is the support operator, okay? Now, I know some of y'all are going to watch this and say, wow, Moody, I guess, you're, I guess you're a professional cuckold in the game. All right, whatever, okay? Yes, I love playing healing characters in MMOs, all right? Because I love supporting the team, all right? I love being the support beam. And one of my favorite operators in this game is Montaigne and Clash. Now, these are two operators with shields, okay? So where I'm kind of going with this is... The only negative part of this community, the, the popularity that's been gained, is the player base that comes out of it. Now don't get me wrong, I like that there's more people playing one of my favorite games, but it really feels like with Rainbow Six Siege, a good chunk of these players are first off, hacking? You know how many games I've played in the last week where there's just been a whole goddamn row of uh, X player has been banned for cheating? Insanity, okay? It seems like all players do in this game is fucking cheat. All right, it's insanity. It's crazy. It shouldn't be this normal. But the other player base that I've seen just cannot stand going up against a shield whatsoever. Now, the name of the game is Rainbow Six Siege, not Call of Duty. Call of Duty. If you want to get to, if you want to put some kills on the board, play COD, play Counter Strike, play something of that nature. Rainbow Six is a tactical game that's centered around synergy and using operators that complement each other. See, with a whole roster of 50 operators, each of these guys and gals bring unique stuff to the table. For instance, Blackbeard, Blackbeard puts Saran Wrap in front of his assault rifle and tanks one bullet, max. Valkyrie has high-definition cameras that can spy anywhere on the map and basically keep you up to date with all of the shenanigans operators are pulling. Dokubi can do the calling strat where she just calls everyone's phones and reveals positions from an audio perspective. And of course, Montaigne's got a shield. Now, the problem with the shield and the player base is if they can't snap to your head and instantly get a kill, they'll be mad about it, at least some players. And I found a great way to piss off a whole bunch of these players by actually bringing the shield in Rainbow Six to the table and winning actual entire rounds through it. Now, while I don't get crazy amount of kills on the board, I am consistently at the top of the leaderboard because I gain a lot of score in supporting my team. Yeah, going into a site and planting a diffuser and bringing a big shield with you to help support your team and basically be the reconnaissance is what you need to separate a win from a loss. And the amount of people that I've played with that get absolutely ass mad at the fact that I'm bringing a shield by saying, wow, I guess somebody doesn't have any skill. Brother, all I'm seeing is 4-0 on the board and us gaining the victory, all right? That's all that fucking matters. Now, one of the coolest and base things Rainbow Six did was give a shield on the defender side. Now, this operator is Clash, and Clash's special ability is to put on a shield that can electrify people, you know, slowly, sap their damage away, sap their health out. So when you got dudes who blow open an entire wall and they got to see my pasty ass just standing there, all right, looking at him dead in the eyes, zapping them slowly. Yeah, all of a sudden, some of the newer players who play this game forget what game they're playing. A game that involves tactics and learning how to counter.
So instead of, you know, just realizing that you can equip operators like Capiteo that can spread poison gas and basically kill me, or bring in operators that can actually counter me in, in any of those departments. No, instead, all they'll do is continue to proceed and complain about the actual game being played. Dog, it is not about pulling kills on the board. It is about attacking and defending. And if that makes you mad, then I'm sorry, it just makes you mad. But in general, I'm actually happy to see Rainbow Six be in a place where it actually should have been years ago. I think for a while I fell off because the the actual changes to the game weren't that interesting. And what they were doing was kind of promoting an actual playstyle where it was more about getting kills versus actually participating in any form of tactics. So the current season actually changes a lot, even with those shields, which might be one of the reasons why I'm playing it, because it actually adds a whole lot of utility and it adds a whole lot of sense to people playing shields. No longer am I putting my whole ass shield down to change a magazine out of my gun. No longer am I, un for no reason, exposing myself. This game actually brings a lot more support and tactics to the forefront, which is one of the things that I think puts Siege on the actual shooter map. And it's one of the reasons why this season in specific actually is super enjoyable to play. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Rainbow Six is back. And honestly, I, I can say without a shadow of a doubt, I'm having quite an amazing experience actually sitting down and playing one of my favorite shooters again. But I'm having an even more fun experience kind of filtering out the actual player base in this that's only here for the Call of Duty kill, hunk, kill, kill, kill game versus the player base that actually wants to play a fun, competitive, tactical shooter where the whole point is to actually figure out, plan how to invade sites and what synergies to bring. It's a game where actually working with your teammates and bringing the right set of operators can make the entire difference between winning and losing. It's not about who gets a headshot. It's about who actually changes the flow of the game. There is nothing more satisfying in a video game than trying to invade a, a site and opening up entire walls, opening up entire new sight lines and destroying the plans laid by a defending team if you're an attacker or foiling an attacker's plan by having an incredibly solid defense. It's just one of those games where I feel like when done right, it just never gets old. And comparing it to even games nowadays, I think one of the reasons I actually really love this game so much is the destructibility. I haven't played any other tactical shooter and I played tons of them. I played Call of Duty, I played Counter-Strike, I even played a little bit of Valorant when the anti-cheat wasn't messing with me. But I have never played a video game quite like Siege where the ability to modify dynamically an entire environment in a two minute time frame is this possible. And I think that's one of the reasons why this game really did get my attention. It was one of those games when the PS4 dropped, it was absolutely using those new consoles to their actual advantage. And while Siege might be a little dated now, it's still far better than even a lot of the other games that it's in a competing stance with. And don't take this as an entire glazing session. I think the amount of hours I put into Siege is enough glazing in of itself. But, you know, this is one of those things where I'm just genuinely really positive to see. I'm actually really excited to see this constantly grow. And honestly, I'm glad to see Ubisoft kind of come on track with at least this one game. For as much dog shit as they've released in this industry, like Skull and Bones, at least, at least, they haven't yet screwed up Rainbow Six. But then again, this video might be a mixed bag because there might be people who absolutely hate the new current Siege. But honestly, as a former player who is now an actual player once again, I absolutely love this. And only thing I can hope for is just give us some goddamn Linux support. But that being said, though, I'm not going to get too hopeful, ladies and gentlemen. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. I am out.